In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take this and turn it into this. First thing you want to do is click on your camera, hit zero on the numpad, open up the green camera dropdown, select background images, background source, movie clip, and then add your footage. The next thing you want to do is orient your camera so it's on the X axis. Once you've done that, import your head model and scale it to fit within your scene. Try to match the eyes of the model with the eyes of your actor. Be sure to apply your rotation and your scale. You're going to want to be fairly precise here, so make sure you turn on proportional editing and stretch the face out to match that of your actors. Try to make sure everything lines up from the nose to the mouth as it'll make things easier later on. You don't have to worry too much about the neck as we'll be masking it out later. Once you're done with that, you're going to want to add a basic armature, go to viewport display, select in front, and make two bones, one for the neck, one for the head. Once you have both of the bones in the correct position, select the head model and then select the armature. Control P and parent with automatic weights. Once you're done with that, you're going to want to enter pose mode and begin adjusting your bones with auto keyframing turned on. Go through each frame and match the head to the model behind it. Once you're done, it should look like this. Next, you're going to want to go to the shading tab and add a new material for the head. Make sure you guys have Node Wrangler enabled in the Preferences menu. Add in an image texture and put in the still from the first frame of your video. Hit Ctrl T on the image texture and change the vector type to Window. Duplicate your image texture and create a new image with the size of 2048 by 2048. Head over to the UV Editing tab, select all the vertices of your head model, hit U, Smart UV Project. Return to the Shading tab and select the image texture that you copied previously. Change your render engine from EV to Cycles, go down to Bake, select Bake Type Diffused, unselect Direct and Indirect, we only need color for this. Click the Bake tab and it should bake to your image texture. Make sure you save your image because Blender doesn't do it by default. Once you have the new texture baked, you can plug it in to base color and adjust the specular and roughness to make it match your footage better. The next thing we're going to do is assign a vertex group for your scalp. This will help when we add the particle system for the hair. Once you've selected the entire scalp, make a new group, title it Scalp, and hit Assign. The next thing we're going to do is separate the scalp into three separate pieces. To do this, go into X-ray mode and select the faces of the scalp that you want to separate. Once you're done, right-click Separate by Selection and move on to the next piece of the scalp. Once that's done, you're going to want to add a particle system for the hair. Adjust the hair settings as needed. Once you're done with that, go to Vertex Group and assign density to your scalp vertex group that you made previously. Go to Children and select Interpolated. Create a material for the hair using the Hair BSDF.
Return to the Render dropdown and replace the material with the hair material you just made. The next thing we're going to do is change the hair shape. To do this, go to Rendered Mode and zoom in on the hair follicles until you can see the shape of them. You can play around with the settings under the Hair Shape dropdown until you get something that you're satisfied with. Once you're done with that, select all three pieces of the scalp, hit Ctrl L, and copy modifiers. You're going to have to reapply the hair material to the other pieces of the scalp. After you're done with that, go to Particle Edit and comb your hair similar to the subject in the frame. Once you're done, it should look something like this. The next thing you want to do is add a cloth modifier to both pieces of the scalp. Set the speed multiplier to 10, enable pressure, change the pressure from anywhere between 3 to 8 depending on how fast you want the scalp to fly apart. Turn on object collisions and set the distance to 0.391, enable self collisions, set the friction to 5 and distance to 0.015. Ensure that the cloth modifier is above the particle system otherwise the hair won't follow the scalp. Next, we're going to add another particle system for the blood flying out of the scalp. First, you want to add an isosphere, scale it down, and shade smooth. And you're going to assign it this material. I'll leave it on the screen here so you can pause and copy it for yourself. Once you're done with that, return to the particle system. Set the particle system to emitter, change the number to 800, Frame start to frame 2, and set the frame end to the last frame of your sequence. Select render as object, instance object, isosphere, and then play around with the settings to get it to look how you want. Check everything over in rendered mode. Find a free model of a skull and separate it similar to how we did the head. After that, fill the bottom of the head so it's not see-through. Apply flesh texture to make it fit better. To apply the texture to the inside of the skull, I used a solidify modifier and offset the material. To parent the filler piece and the scalp, select both and then select the armature, control P, parent with automatic weights. Notice that there is an error on the bottom of the screen. That means your skull won't follow the armature. Go to Vertex Group, select all vertices, and assign a weight of 1 to the skull. Turn on Automatic Keyframing, and keyframe the skull pieces to follow the scalp pieces. Once that's done, import a brain model. Join the two top pieces together and scale it to fit inside of the skull. Once it sits inside of the skull, parent it to the armature and apply a nice, gross, fleshy material to make it look more real. Open up a new blend file for your blood sim. Insert an isosphere, stretch it. F3 Quick Liquid, scale the domain to fit, make your isospheres look like mine, rotate them so they're facing the X axis, and rotate the camera as well. Select the back isosphere, and determine if you have to go positive X or negative X. Enable initial velocity, and set initial X to 25 meters. For the two side isospheres, you want to make them collide in the middle.
Go back to domain, clip diffusion, and set it to 232. That's the closest coefficient to blood. Go to cache, set your type to modular, frame start to zero, and frame end to one more than your last frame. You can mess around with the field weights if you want, but I didn't. Set your resolution divisions to 120 and bake the data. Once your data is baked, it should look something like this. Verify that you're happy with it. If it's not, you're going to have to change some settings and go rebake it. If you're happy with how it turned out, enable mesh. Up-res factor to 1.35. Turn up your resolution divisions to as high as your computer can handle. I set mine to about 360, and then bake your mesh. Make sure you guys go check out Anico123 for a more in-depth explanation on how fluid systems work. I'll link his channel in the description below. Append the blood sim and make sure it fits inside the skull. Once that's done, you should be left with something looking like this. All that's left to do is go to rendered mode, add a light source to match the lighting a little bit better, and put in an HDRI. This is with, and this is without. Pretty big difference, so. Makes things a lot easier for depositing in the next couple steps here. Now that you're ready to render, set your render engine to cycles. Go to Film and enable Transparent so you can have uh, alpha layer. Make sure you enable Denoising to get the cleanest image. Set your output to the size of frame that you're trying to match. Make sure you enable RGBA and PNG so that you get the alpha layer. And hit Render. Once you're done with that, I'll see you in the next step. For the sake of time, I'm not going to go over painting out your original footage just because it would take too long to go over in this. So all you have to do is just import your PNG sequence and it should turn it into a video. Next thing you're going to want to do is find some free blood assets and smoke kits just to fill it up and add a little bit of spice. After that's done, you can nest the sequence and apply some uh, global effects to it. Um, I added a mask just to get rid of that uh, lower jaw that we were talking about earlier. And then I also ended up adding a zoom blur and some camera shake just to sell the motion a little bit more. Add in some gross sounding noises and a gunshot and that's all you need. And that's pretty much it. So here you go.